What's a Caseum K-Series? Well, it's a Caseum 7 powered by a 1400cc Rover K-Series as seen in the latest Rover 114, the Metro as was. And these cars all identical in specification. And here, with these ultra-lightweight Caseum chassis and the substantial horsepower of the K-Series engine, some very exciting racing. Away they go then, and to give you an idea of what it might be like, this is the view from VJ Angelo's machine as the grid scampers away and off down towards Cops for the first time. And as you can see, a packed field. The Caterham Racing Challenges have got very large grids, oversubscribed in a lot of cases, and some spectacular racing. Warren Gilbert rushing through the middle of the pack as they come down here onto the brakes on this international circuit at Silverstone and a number of them locking up there as you can see as they go into the right hander at Beckett's heading down through the island curves here to the tight right hander at Abbey again very hard on the brakes and it's pick a line any line with this Cajun field through the left hander they swing mostly Number 25, Bruce White, doesn't quite swing in the right direction. Warren Gilbert has, though. And this is through the new complex, the revised Luffield corner, a long, long, long 180-degree corner. Just at the bottom of the picture, there you can see him soaring away at the wheel, trying to balance it on the throttle. And the leader, number 12, that's Michael Woodcock from number four, Michael Kane. Not a Hollywood film star, you understand or indeed runner of a Group C team. And there is one of the favoured propensities of Caterham's to fling off wheel arches at the earliest given opportunity. Mind you, under severe provocation like that in the gravel, I think I probably would as well. So Woodcock leads it. Kane in second place and a big challenge there. Into third place, fourth place rather. Dennis Otier, car number five. Got his indicators on for reasons best known to himself and a big lock up there for Damon Dance in number seven. It's action all the way with these guys and a commentator's nightmare. They are rarely in the same order at the next corner as they were when they left the last one, as you can see there. Number 12 still leads it. Michael Woodcock up to 62 in second place. Richard Fors down to third, number four. Michael Kane and now five Dennis OTA is challenging him as they get the power on just drifting wide. Ooh, Kane using Herbert's trench there over the edge of the curbs. So Kane chasing down now the man who just dispossessed him two corners ago, number 62. And Richard Forrest going for the lead but doesn't get it from Michael Woodcock. And they're starting a little breakaway. Top six cars leading the chasing pack, leaving them behind as well. Here comes the peloton then, all safely into the right-hander so far. Don't watch too long further down the field, just in case they all get a bit pear-shaped. Riding again with Warren Gilbert. Now he is in this chasing pack. And you can see, having just come out of the island curves, this long straight with this long left-hander at the end. You've got to be on the brakes in the corner as well. Down to second, very tight right-hand corner using the curbs. Good, very high curb on the exit. Avoid it. That's it. Make your opponent run over it. And then dashing up towards the flat in fourth gear bridge corner. And that's a mighty daunting corner. Across the start-finish line now, the leaders into Cops again, 14 is Nick Dudfield there. Chasing hard in fifth place. Michael Kane at the front this time. Michael Woodcock second. So there's been a bit of shuffling of the pack out of our sight. Warren Gilbert getting Beckett's right. And behind them, oh dear, 77 Mark Griffiths getting it very wrong. DJ Angelo showing us exactly what it looks like to tap somebody in a corner as well. Being very informative in this race, our man Angelo. And all oh my words, under assault, Michael Kane, driven over the rear tire off by Michael Woodcock, and that's done Woodcock no end of damage. I don't think Cajun front suspension was ever designed to stand up to that sort of treatment. 
Well, Kane's lost a wing, but doesn't seem to be slowing him down much. In fact, it may have made the car slightly more aerodynamic. Yellow and white flags are out, which means a slow-moving course car. The leaders carry on. No overtaking for the moment until they pass it. Let's have a look at that again. Woodcock brutally and unnecessarily assaults the back of Kane's car. Makes an elementary error just uh, touching him. And the Kashem's like open wheeler racing cars really almost like single seaters in the way that uh, they are vulnerable to interlocking wheels oh here's the battle for third oh a big lock up from damon dance he goes down a spot and up a spot goes david clark which makes him third fourth fifth by my reckoning and here comes the leader three mud guards on his wagon michael kane still rolling along passing one of the back markers and Richard Fors punching the air, not quite sure why, waving perhaps, gesticulating, catching something that's fallen out of the car, who can say? But it looks as though he's coming home in second place anyway, because Michael Kane wins it. Checkered flag for Michael Kane. Richard Fors second place. 14, Nick Dudfield was third at the head of that squabbling pack ahead of Bivis OTA, David Clark and Damon Dance. Well, I have to say there was probably more adrenaline in that pack than there has ever been in any cardiac resuscitation unit. Snetterton in Norfolk for round three of the Caseham K-Series Challenge. These Caseham cars using Rover's K-Series 1.4 litre engine and all otherwise identical. Jerry Taylor on pole, Michael Woodcock there alongside him. And uh, conditions still fairly blustery. They had a wet qualifying session and, uh, well, slightly damp patches still on the track. The red lights are on. They go green. Away they go. A fairly even start. Everybody trying to feed in the horsepower. And riding with Warren Gilbert. He started third on the grid. Didn't get away very well. And contact there. Just a little rub going into the first corner. That won't help his case either. So relatively free of the normal first corner bumping and mooring as they accelerate down Revit straight. 25 there, Bruce White. He was fifth in the grid. Fifth in the race, just behind the little lead group. A big puff of uh, cement dust being blown up by everybody as they go past it. At least it'll be a little clearer for lap two then. Not everybody will have to drive through the dust. And a big cloud of brake smoke there. Somebody goes off before the chicane. Got it massively wrong under braking. No problems for Rangeley though. Off they go. And this huge field swarming through. 32 starters. And there is Ross Bygrave. He was seventh on the grid. And there goes Vijay Angelo. Still ahead of Matthew Marsh. Matthew's lost. A mudguard, and somebody has been off. There's dirt everywhere, and that looks as though it may have been the turquoise car again. Oh, and he's locking brakes there as well. Well, all sorts of problems for number five, Dennis Autier. And our camera car now in Rangeley chasing him. He's alongside. He's got the inside line. It's not necessarily the better line here, down into the left-hander. Under the bridge they come onto the brakes well Autier's got the line he's trying around the outside oh dear it's all going on here well they all seem to get through safely no somebody else has gone off this time Edward Ashley Carter picking up the action with him he qualified 23rd and is running just at the bottom of the top 20 at the moment Damon Dance loses a place. Howard Redhouse, number 53, goes past him. He qualified ninth, so he's having a great race. Lost a bit of his number plate, probably gets stopped by the police on the way home. Warren Gilbert, our cameraman, right with them. And he's right in the middle of this one. Oh, contact again. Just, you could just see the tyre smoke as the fiberglass arch rubbed on the wheel there. But somehow they both kept it together. So they lost momentum, and Warren Gilbert's right with them. Oh dear, going backwards there, Ross Bygrave, 47. Alistair Chalmers gets collected, and is that all? 
Oh no, somebody else off in the boonies as well. Mine, that's Tim Myler. I'm afraid no more playing around on this last lap. Here are the leaders though. Michael Woodcock leads it from Howard Redhouse into the chicane for the last time. Warren Gilbert holding station behind. The chequered flag awaits. Michael Woodcock looks to have this one in the bag. But no, he's been closed down. Howard Redhouse alongside him. Well, side by side at the line, I don't know what Woodcock did to lose that one, but Howard Redhouse gets the decision. No hundreds and no seconds behind him. The same time for both drivers. Fantastic. On pole position, the fastest man in qualifying, number 62, Richard Fors. Michael Caine alongside him, number four. And lining up third on the grid, David Clark, the third quickest man in qualifying, number one. They all had a bye. Everybody else has already raced in the qualifying race. The man who won that starts fourth on the grid. He's number 53, Howard Redhouse. The rest of them line up behind, ready to go for this third round of the K-Series Challenge. Well, both Michael Caine and David Clark already have a win to their names this season. Will one of them make it a second? Let's see. As the lights turn to green and the field erupts on their way down to Riches. Very good start from number one, David Clark. There's some twitching from Richard Fors as he tries to keep Clark behind him. But David Clark in the Dago machine, number one, really got the drop on the rest of the field there and surges from third to first as they come out of the first turn. Now into Sia, the second right-hand corner here. And some very, very close action behind. Ian Rangley, our cameraman, started well down on the grid. And the congestion as everybody piles into the corners, all too evident there. He continues, so do the others. And look at this, Michael Kane flies down the inside into the S's. Kane's ahead. But coming out, David Clark is back in front. Several cars taking to the grass there to exit the S's. Not the ideal way of doing it. So it's Clark, Kane and Fors. And coming back on from that dusty excursion, the winner of the qualifying race, 53, Howard Redhouse. That was not how he did it at all. Riding now with Warren Gilbert. Fourth place for the number three machine. And he is right with the lead trio. Let's follow them now onto the start. Finish straight as they've come away from Russell. That's chicane that ends the lap. So here they come, David Clark, and right behind him, Michael Kane. Now Kane steps out of the slipstream, but he's not close enough to challenge under braking. Fourth third, Gilbert fourth, and here comes everybody else. The battle of the two black cars, number 50, David Garrett, Vicky Henderson there in 21, just holding on to sixth position. And Michael Kane would like to break clear of this now five-way tussle. Warren Gilbert working his way up to third as Kane takes the lead. Michael Woodcock now latched onto the tail of this group, and this is going to be very entertaining stuff. These guys are good racers. They're in ideal machinery to really put on a show. Through the long right-hander at Gorham Curve, this is a very bold place to try an overtaking manoeuvre. Now, as they try and straighten up and get onto the brakes for Russell, is where to try it. Warren Gilbert holds on in third, now onto the power, feeding it in nice and smoothly. You want to avoid the tail slide, which spins away racing speed. And look at this, David Clark and Michael Kane aren't even bothering to try and pick up a toe off each other. Side by side across the line and all the way down into the braking area. Who has the advantage? Clark on the outside seems to, yes he does. Warren Gilbert gets passed as well, so Gilbert goes back down to fourth position. But he's got a better run out of the corner. Oh, he's just slightly balked. Can't make it there on the way into Sia. So Clark leads Kane, then Fors, Gilbert and Woodcock in fifth position on the tail of this group now. Riding with Michael Woodcock, chasing down this quartet ahead of him. All the way down the long, long Revit straight, really piling up the speed, trying to pick up an aerodynamic toe. Warren Gilbert has done so, and he's passed Richard Fors. Michael Woodcock makes a real meal of the uh, S's here. Now he's coming out nice and quickly. Will he be able to pick up a place here? He's trying to, but Richard Fors is defending desperately against it. So Michael Woodcock had the run on Richard Fors there, but Fors just moved across and shut the door. Perfectly legal, but very frustrating indeed for Woodcock. Now out of Corum, get the car balanced. Hard, hard on the brakes. Look at the cars weaving under braking. Release the brakes before you turn in over the curbs, running very much into the gravel. There goes David Clark. Got away with it though in the number one machine. The 
He had a wheel over the wrong side of the curbing and just avoided the grip of the gravel traps. Michael Kane there on the left of the picture now in the white nose. David Clark alongside him. And again, Clark with the wide outside line, carves across, goes in quicker. So Clark leads, Kane second, Gilbert third, then the two yellow cars, Fors and Woodcock, riding again with Michael Woodcock, still in fifth. Rain on the horizon, dark clouds threatening. They've got fully treaded tires on, so if it rains, they'll still have grip. They won't need to stop the race. Of course, the drivers will get pretty wet. They don't have roofs, but then who cares about that? It's all action at the front as well. David Clark under threat once more. Michael Kane again comes down the inside and into the S's. Kane leads. We've seen Clark come back from this on the way out. He doesn't do it this time. And uh, going into and out of third there is Richard Fors bounces back across the grass into the path of Michael Woodcock. They just avoid a collision, only just. So Warren Gilbert is third and side by side through Coram. Fantastic racing. David Clark on the inside. Michael Kane with the great testicular move around the outside. Fantastic stuff by him. Gilbert in third. Woodcock now up into fourth. We ride with him. Warren Gilbert just ahead of us. That's a red car. And somewhere alongside any moment should be Richard Fors. He'll be picking up the toe now. He's still in the slipstream of the number 12 machine. He's not close enough to challenge here. Behind that group now, number 50, David Garrett. He's broken away from the rest of them behind in sixth place. And he's trying desperately to chase. Vicky Henderson up against the pit wall, the number 21 machine, trying to pick up a place from 53, Howard Redhouse. Redhouse has fought back superbly. And she's got Jerry Taylor, the red car with the white mud gods there, was going around the outside. Somebody else hurtles off into the grass and rejoins undamaged. And the leaders still side by side. Oh my goodness, so close through the bomb hole. That really is very, very brave racing indeed by Michael Kane and David Clark. Michael Woodcock right in here now, trying to get his nose inside Warren Gilbert. Gilbert's in third place. Woodcock looking down the inside. There's not room for him. He doesn't make the move alongside anyway. He would have had his front wheels chopped off there by Warren Gilbert's back end. So Woodcock with Richard Force, the 62 machine, the yellow car with the blue nose band right behind him. Woodcock now hugging the pit wall in the dead air there, trying to break the toe, trying to make sure that Force has to go around the outside. Now he comes wide into the braking area. Force goes down the inside, doesn't have the run on the corner. Can't get through there as they go through somebody else's tire dust. Into Seer, successfully through for Michael Woodcock. The rain's still in the distance. Dark clouds threatening, but nothing going on here. Oh dear. Number 10, Ben Entwistle, losing it in the target motorsport entry. Spins it away there at the first corner, but he will rejoin as well. And again, Michael Kane goes ahead here. This is just fantastic stuff. Michael Kane now leading David Clark. Warren Gilbert third. This is the battle for fourth and fifth. And Michael Woodcock has now slid down to fifth as Richard Force has gone by him. Onto the brakes then. Around the outside looks David Clark. It doesn't happen for him there. We ride with Warren Gilbert getting a little bit squirrely as he went in a bit quick and came out full of opposite lock and on the power. David Clark going the long way around the outside as Michael Kane hugs the pit wall. No aerodynamic advantage for David Clark. This is just purely on his momentum from the corner and he nips ahead. Now it's very close indeed. Michael Kane second. Warren Gilbert third, but he's got 62 Richard Fors alongside him there. And the action just as fierce at the bottom order of the uh, running as well. Down in the mid 20s here, riding with Ed Ashley Carter. And he's having a fairly good stab here at the chicane as well. He's closing up. Niels Baker, number 69, is his target. Warren Gilbert weaving to try and break the toe. Now he's trying for Kane, surely not. Well, that was a, an almost a move for second place there. Warren Gilbert taking on this lead battle. Don't forget, he's got Richard Fors glued tight to his rear panel. And that makes every maneuver he makes doubly important. Again, Matthew Marsh, the number 33 machine, trying to pick up places. 
One of many drivers in the field with the black cross on the yellow background, the novices cross, Matthew Marsh, a uh, commodity dealer from Hong Kong, jets over for his races here in Britain for the Casham K Series Challenge. Riding again with Warren Gilbert, secure in third place, but he's not having any of that. He's looking for second, so Michael Kane and David Clark had better watch out. Oh dear! Well, allowed the door to stay ajar a little too much, and Richard Force went through there into third place at Riches. So out of Sear for the final time, David Clark leading Michael Kane, Richard Force third, Warren Gilbert fourth, and behind him now riding with Michael Woodcock in fifth place. Well, you have to say that this battle for third now, the three-way battle could go either way, but I think victory will have to go to David Clark or Michael Kane. Now the two cars behind Richard Falls are trying to tow along past him. Warren Gilbert makes it into the S's. Oh, some very, very strong driving there by Richard Falls, letting Michael Woodcock go in no uncertain terms that he would not give away fourth place, even though he had to concede third. So Clark now with the biggest advantage we've seen him having in this race, at least four car lengths over Michael Kane. Down to Russell for the last time. First is decided, but second, third, fourth and fifth still to play for. This looks like the way they'll cross the line though. David Clark winning it from Michael Kane. Clark taking his second win on the trot in the Caterham K Series Challenge. And his winning advantage of 0.7 of a second certainly belies how close that race was all the way down to the line. And those 40 points for winning allow David Clark to move to within two points of the championship leader, Michael Kane, after three rounds. Castle Coombe for round seven of the Caseham K Series Challenge. What's a K Series, you ask? It's a 1.4 litre Rover engine. The Dago Orange car, number one on the left hand side of the picture is the pole man, David Clark, slotting in behind him, number four, Michael Kane, no, not him, and 53, Howard Redhouse, third on the grid, and third as they pull away from the line. Side by side by side, three, four, ooh, there we, I think there was a row with five abreast there as they went up to towards Quarry Corner, and this massive field streaming through here. So the front runners assuming their requisite positions. Clark leads, Kane alongside. It's all that you'd expect from a Caterham race. These cars may not produce the 190 odd horsepower of a Vauxhall powered car, the two litre Vauxhall twin cam, but uh, they are still extremely quick indeed. BJ Angelo, our cameraman, started well back on the grid, giving us a very, very good view indeed of just what it's like to be in the midfield. Started 20th on the grid, picked himself up a position there at Tower, and now you can see the target ahead of him. Now you can see that the lead has changed once more. David Clark and Michael Kane are back in qualifying order, at least they were going into our picture. And coming out of our shot and into the next one, they've swapped over again. Howard Redhouse right with them in third place, and everybody else battling for position all the way down the field. Fantastic stuff. Red House now slots up into second. So Clark goes down to third and very wide indeed. That's going to be a problem. He's lost another place to Jerry Taylor and number five coming alongside him as well. I think we'll probably make up a space. Dennis Otier. Well, there are three cars in third position at the moment and about half a dozen more trying to inveigle themselves into that battle as well. Chief Mundo 77, Mark Griffiths there. He's down in about seventh place. But that could be second or third at any moment. David Clark goes back ahead. Michael Kane is back in second. Howard Redhouse is back in third. Can't keep up with this at all. 22, Stephen Morley and number five, Dennis Otier, battling for the same piece of racetrack. Fortunately, everybody so far, touching wood, has seemed to avoid intimate bodily contact. So the lead quartet now it is, starting to pull away a little bit as the other battles develop down the field. Cars kicking up the dust as they use all the road and more. Seven, Damon Danson, 77, Mark Griffiths side by side, and our man VJ has now caught the group ahead of him and looking to pick up a place into Quarry. That is 77, Mark Griffiths. So a very good opening sequence from VJ Angelo, but 68, Howard Spooner gets himself into trouble there. Spooner the spinner. 
And as he rotates across the track, everybody trying desperately to find a way of avoiding him. Off he goes. So the yellow flags will be tucked away the next time they come round there. Clark Kane, and it's eight. Jerry Taylor now up into third place ahead of Howard Redhouse. Redhouse doesn't like that though, so he's coming alongside just to intimidate him on the run down to uh, Old Paddock. So this is going to be a monster side-by-side -side flat in top third place battle. Through they go, and it looks as though the number eight machine is still third. So it's Clark, Kane, Taylor, Redhouse. Yes, indeed it is. And then through goes our battle with our man Vijay Angelo on the back of it there. So that puts him inside the top 10. Oh dear, the first bit of uh, actual contact. 50 and 13, David Garrett, number 50. 13, did he get going again? Yes, he did. Slightly lighter, Ross Bygrave, the yellow car. 44, BJ Angelo chasing down this leading pack as it is. A very large leading pack, a leading pack all the same. You can see David Clark's car has still got its road number plates on the front. Not only does he enjoy himself racing it at the weekend, but he clearly enjoys going out for a bit of a flat on a summer evening around his local lanes and more offs. Well, again, Ross Bygrave and again, David Garrett. Well, it wasn't a replay, so they've come into contact again. I don't know if one of their mums is down there and they're just trying to keep them entertained, but I would imagine there might be words about that later. And BJ Angelo loses it. Oh dear, well, he was going so well as well. Much too much power on the grass trying to get back onto the track. So BJ goes down half a dozen spots at least. He was just in 10th. That'll see him down towards the bottom of the top 20. And with more work to do, running a little wide is David Clark. Running wider is Michael Kane. And so uh, Howard Redhouse slips around him. So Redhouse and Kane second. Taylor in fourth. Leading group behind them is Denis Outier. And then 22 right behind him is Stephen Worley. There are Damon Dance and Mark Griffiths. Still hard at it. Good boys. And still the battle for second continues. <laughs> Very gentlemanly of Howard Redhouse there, putting on his indicators to show the man behind him that he was going to chop across his nose. Replay of Vijay Angelo just being a little bit over enthusiastic with the throttle coming out of camp. It's a very, very common place for drivers to spin out there. A quick corner starts to run away downhill as you come towards the grid. And uh, just too much power too soon. Well, the indicators are off now from Howard Redhouse, but it doesn't mean the gloves are off. Jerry Taylor behind him, looking for a way past, and 61 and 69 for a change coming together. Niels Baker and Edward Ashley Carter in 61. Baker seems to have got uh, a hose blowing off the radiator, or indeed a radiator damage. He's certainly losing water. So, Kane in second place, Clark leading it, Redhouse third where has Jerry Taylor gone the number eight machine has dropped right back yellow lights are on that's the equivalent to a yellow flag it means caution no passing there will be danger ahead there is the waved yellows slow down and look out because they're still trying to get the cars out of the way there at the exit of the final corner so back to full racing and out of the car without any damage, both of the drivers. And very, very wide indeed goes Howard Redhouse. Just can't quite seem to get to grips with Quarry at the moment. So Clark, Kane, Redhouse, and then a gap still. Taylor on his own now. And then Stephen Worley in 22 haranguing Damon Dance. So Damon Dance has really come on strong. Very, very, very big slides now these cars are generating. Oh, just slide there by Michael Kane. Very well held indeed. I think that notched his uh, heart rate up a couple of points. No moves into the final corner though from Michael Kane. So the chicken flag awaits David Clark. Clark wins it from Kane. Red House. Taylor on his own in fourth place, but it's the battle behind them. Everybody is fifth. Absolutely everybody is fifth. It looks maybe as though the red nose of 22 Stephen Worley got ahead. He did from Damon Dance. 
and then Mark Griffiths, Warren Gilbert and Dennis Otier. Well, despite taking the points on the day, David Clark was later docked that score because of technical infringements. Brands Hatch for the qualification race for the Cation K Series Challenge. Brilliant summer weather, brilliant racing cars. What a chance for these drivers to enjoy themselves. Front row of the grid, Keane and Woodcock. We're with uh, Jerry Taylor, car number eight on the outside of the third row of the grid, the fifth fastest in this race. The front two men on the grid from the main race do not have to race here. They have the fastest two times in qualifying. They get through. Everybody else gets a scramble for positions. This is qualifying again, except that everybody else is trying to buzz you off at the same time. Jerry Taylor finds that out to his cost as they come up to Druids. Continues, four wheels still on his wagon. So Justin Keane, the pole position man. Number 19 car, distinctive black and bright orange combination. And that's a very effective color scheme that you wouldn't normally uh, think of. Very distinctive, marks him out easily for the spectators and for us poor commentators alike. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's leading spot. And I'm afraid that uh, Michael Woodcock does just that, he covets the lead very much indeed. Woodcock holding it tight as Keane runs very wide indeed. And as the field stream through, tires squeal at Druids marking their progress. I rather fancy that Woodcock might have been in a position to make a move there. Justin Keane still leads it. Woodcock, well, was down in third now, back up to second. Great stuff here. Howard Redhouse there got third away when Woodcock ran wide, coming out of Druids. And now they're side by side once more. On the outside, they're waving. <laughs> I don't believe they are actually waving at each other there. After you, Claude, Howard Redhouse, none of that at all. I'm not quite sure why he was waving at Michael Woodcock. There certainly didn't seem to be any uh, contact there or any reason why he should be adversely waving. Number 44 goes into the gravel, Vijay Angelo. Oh, now he's, now he's got it wedged. Oh, he was so nearly out as well. Oh, that's a disappointment indeed. Vijay looked very quick indeed last time out at Castle Coombe and then went off right near the end. And he was nearly out of the gravel. He really will kick himself when he sees that on replay because he could have still been in the race and out there having fun. Instead of which, he'll be sitting hot and sweaty on the tyre wall somewhere. So now the leader, Justin Keane, never had a quiet moment to himself throughout the course of the race. Howard Redhouse with him as they clash on the gravel. Oh, dear! Michael Woodcock, here was who was kicking up the gravel right near the edge of the track. Woodcock outbraked himself monumentally there to such an extent that uh, Dennis Otier there in the uh, Miami blue colored number five machine was looking to have a pass for third place. Well, Otier didn't get passed. Jerry Taylor didn't make up a place there either, I'm afraid, at Druids. So Jerry Taylor slipping a little in the uh, general classification here. Keane leads it though from Red House. Let's see where third place is. Well, Jerry Taylor, all now having a look as they come into clearways. Mm, no. I think perhaps he grabbed his gear a little early there. I don't know if Louise Anderson seen somebody over in the grandstand she wanted to have a word with. Not quite sure why she was on the grass there. Just uh, missed her breaking point. Justin Keane, Howard Redhouse right together and third and fourth as they were but taking another look at the inside was Dennis OTA. Yellow flags are out. Oh, it's OTA. OTA sitting there beached on the outside. He rejoins now. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And here come the leaders then for the final time. Justin Keane drifting a little wide. Howard Redhouse still with him. Not in a position to make a move though I don't think. Justin Keane has this one surely. Jerry Taylor comes in very quickly again. It is the last lap, it's the last couple of corners. Can he make up a place? Oh, again, very slow away. Really missing that gear shift quite badly. Damon Dance drifts past. Damon Dance picks up a place on the run up to the checkered flag. The flag waves and it's all over. So Keane, Redhouse, Woodcock, Griffiths, Gilbert and Marsh, the top six. Onto the grid for round eight of the KCM K Series Challenge on a sunny Brands Hatch circuit. 
on pole position, Michael Kane. Alongside him, David Clark. Third place man, Paul Stevens. Those three went through onto the grid without the qualifying race experience. Behind them, Justin Keane, the winner of the qualifying race, lines up fourth alongside the 31 car of Paul Stevens. So there's Keane, one race win to his credit already this afternoon. And even more glorious sunshine awaiting the start of this race. Two by two on the staggered grid, they line up, away they go. A nice start by Keane around the outside. Will he come into the lead in the first corner, Justin Keane? He is really putting in a move around the outside. Three of them side by side. Oh, a recipe for disaster with these open wheels. But somehow everybody keeps their nose clean. Justin Keane around the outside, looking for second at the very least. Jerry Taylor around the outside, but coming past him. Number three up the inside of him, Warren Gilbert. So a good start from Taylor, because Gilbert uh, finished a couple of places ahead of him in the qualification race. Damon Dance ahead of them and Matthew Marsh. So the front two on the grid, Michael Kane and David Clark. First and second, Justin Keane third, but being elbowed aside. Oh, Paul Stevens puts in a very bold move indeed on Justin Keane. Somebody kicking up the gravel a little bit. Damon Dance, number seven on the left-hand side there. Right ahead of Jerry Clark, our cameraman. So, David Clark on the outside, Michael Kane on the inside. Who's got better brakes or more courage? Well, hard to tell, really, I'm afraid. Paul Stevens in third. Justin Keane, two cars ahead of us here as we ride with Jerry Taylor. There's the red and the yellow, and then there's Justin Keane. So Justin Keane was certainly elbowed aside in that scrap coming around the first lap. Four, Kane, one, Clark, 31. Stevens behind him in third place. And then they are all together, Justin Keane down in fifth as the leader kicks up the dirt on the outside of the track. Michael Kane using every centimetre of the road. And that little lack of momentum perhaps coming out of clearways onto Brabham Strait gives David Clark the chance to drift by into Paddock. David Clark leads it. Michael Kane coming back at him around the outside, but that does leave the inside vulnerable. And again, robust driving from Paul Stevens. Oh, 77 spins. Dear, oh dear. So Mark Griffiths out of the reckoning there. Bits of debris flying around. And here comes the leader. Oh, Michael Kane has been elbowed well down. Kane seems to be in fourth or fifth there. Right about where Justin Keane ended up when he got bounced. In fact, uh, Michael Woodcock is alongside Justin Keane, renewing their battle from the qualification race. And just ahead of them is Michael Kane, the number four machine. So Paul Stevens is being very robust indeed in his tactics. And again, contact. Stevens has now hit everybody that he's tried to pass. Gets past Michael Kane. Uh, gets past David Clark. Gets past. Justin Keane, and all with the same result. So Paul Stevens leads it now. Slipping up into second is Michael Kane. Down to third goes David Clark. Behind them, 53, Howard Redhouse is the blue car. And then Justin Keane behind him. So what can they do about Paul Stevens now? Stevens leading, and Justin Keane coming around the outside now of Red House. This is great stuff. They've been enjoying themselves all afternoon, and so it continues. Michael Woodcock in the mix there as well with the three of them. Around the outside comes Michael Kane. Good move. Kane leads. And was somebody going a little bit wide? Yes. <laughs> Predictably enough, perhaps, Justin Keane going very, very wide indeed around Paddock. And uh, Sir Michael Woodcock locks up the brakes into Druids. Justin Keane goes around the inside, a big puff of smoke just ahead of our cameraman here. It means that Jerry Taylor picks up a place that somebody else puffs smoke from uh, their brakes. And Taylor certainly seems to be missing a gear here. I have a feeling it may be third, but he has loads of revs and then it bogs and everybody streams past him again, even the people he's just passed. So Jerry Taylor, one gear short of a full gearbox, doing a very good job indeed. 33, Matthew Marsh. 
the uh, rat race machine. Matthew Marsh, one time motorsport commentator here in the UK, now lives and works in Hong Kong and comes back. That isn't that jet set. Comes back to race his cage from here in the UK. And Marsh now battling for sixth place with Justin Keane, so top stuff from him. Stevens once more ahead. Kane and Clark, second and third. And there is Red House, the blue car. And behind them, it's Keane and Marsh, fifth and sixth. So Michael Kane now with David Clark in very close pursuit. And this lead quartet strung together by a very short piece of elastic indeed. Again, around the outside, Michael Kane puts in his familiar move, and again it works on Paul Stevens. Stevens has no answer to that at all. Guards the inside, but Kane finds a way of picking up speed around the outside that Stevens just can't deal with. David Clark looking to hold off Howard Redhouse now, having initially looked to put a move on Michael Kane for second. And I don't think he's going to do it. I think Redhouse is through. He is indeed. So Redhouse up to third. Now, let's see where Paul Stevens is going to try and find a way past here. Michael Kane, Paul Stevens. Stevens using the outside line. If it worked for Kane, it can work for him. It's worked for him before, it works for him again. Redhouse third, Clark running wide. Just dropping away a little. A couple of car lengths is all that it needs. And very close indeed. As for the first time, Redhouse makes a move for the lead. Stevens just holds on though. Kane up into second at the expense of Red House. That really, oh dear, oh dear, oh my goodness, and Red House got two wheels on the grass there and it all just got away from him. He lifted off and it went even further away. Paul Stevens outbreaks himself, how does he hold on to that? Well, because Michael Kane outbreaked himself as well. So, Stevens, Kane, Clark, Red House long gone now, out of the running. Stevens and Kane. Clark in third, having had to take avoiding action, now just ahead of the rest of them. So the battle for the lead, up into Druids, Stevens from Kane. They're almost turning into bottom bend before Clark gets a view of them again as he exits Druids, such is their advantage now. Now, is Kane biding his time? Has he got another ace in the hole, another trick up his sleeve? Again, Stevens gets on the power nice and early, slides the Kasham, nicely controlled there. As they dash to the line, it's Stevens from Kane. Kane just couldn't find a way to get past in those last couple of laps. Now he can, of course. Too late, though. David Clark third from Michael Moorcock. Warren Gilbert and Matthew Marsh shakes the game. And the points battle raging still between leader Kane, second place man Clark, Gilbert third, and Taylor in fourth. Bank Holiday Monday, Mallory Park, and the Caterham K Series challenge reaches round nine. On pole position, number one, David Clark on the left-hand side of the picture, won the earlier race in the afternoon. Alongside him, Michael Woodcock, the yellow car, number 12. Damon Dance in the middle of the field, finding his way through the puddles into the first corner. And a number of them already finding their way out onto the gravel. As you can see, conditions really very treacherous indeed. BJ Angelo making his way back onto the track. Some very, very wet running just offline, and especially when you get out onto the grass. Through there go three and five, Warren Gilbert and Dennis Otier. But here are the leaders Woodcock from Clark, and just diving up the inside there, Jerry Taylor picks up a place from 77, Mark Griffiths. 
third place is Howard Redhouse, the number 53, the darker blue of the two blue cars there. Second and third, Clark and Woodhouse, but Michael Woodcock under pressure now for the lead. Very good run through Devil's Elbow, puts David Clark in an ideal position to move ahead. The slippery surface flag, the red and yellow stripes are out, but I think most of the drivers are aware of just how wet it is there. Up to the S's comes the leader. Second and third right with him, Jerry Taylor in fourth there, leading the next little group through. And some battling offline as they come into the S's. Very brave move. Riding with Ross Bygrave, out of the S's, up towards the hairpin. Come over to the left, 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 wide, brake late, turn in, late apex and then full power all the way down the hill, rushing through Devil's Elbow. Quick glance at the pit board, onto the brakes, down a gear and through the long 180 degree right-hander. Seems to go on forever there, and indeed it is going on forever and ever and ever for Howard Redhouse onto the grass, and the lake beckons. Oh, a big impact in the tyres. Well, all the water in those tyres made it look even more spectacular. They've taken the energy out of the crash, and he scrambles out to safety. So Clark now with Woodcock behind him. Third place for Mark Griffiths. So Jerry Taylor down in fifth. We ride now with Damon Dance. Windscreen wipers going. As he looks down the inside, picks up the place there from 69, Niels Baker. Oh, but uh, traditional Mallory Park hairpin collision there. Always the case, if you go wide and leave the door open, somebody will come inside. Well, drifting out over the curbs on the power too early, I'm afraid, for the 53, Howard Redhouse. Across the road, hard on the brakes, looking over his shoulder. Oh dear, the dump. And a very early bath for Howard Redhouse. Big rearward impact, but these Cashams, although they're small, are strong. And he walked away from that one without any injuries. Big lock up and running wide there under pressure. 35, Chris Wood. Michael Woodcock now coming under sustained assault from Jerry Taylor. This is the battle for second place, five cars in it. And one false move by any of them will see them demoted to the back of this group. Well, no false moves for Michael Kane, though. He moves up into second place. Passing the back markers now, David Clark at the hairpin, safely through. Kane second, big, big lock up as he tries to hold off Michael Woodcock. And Jerry Taylor with the white wings on his car. Trying to hold on to his position as well. Trouble for Russell Bugden, the number 89. And half a dozen places will be gone by the time he rejoins. Michael Kane in second then, Woodcock in third place. Peter Mangan, 36 there, in fourth. Jerry Taylor behind him with the white wings on the car. And here is the leader, Clark is really just romping away with this race comfortably ahead of the rest of the field, safely through the S's. Down into the braking area for the hairpin. That's the ideal line on the power now, winding off the lock. And here comes second place. Third is Mangian. Fourth now is Woodcock. Woodcock under pressure from Taylor. Just a slight touch there. Taylor really is in a hurry to try and find a way past. Griffiths right with them. Taylor needs to be in a hurry as well. They've got one lap to go. David Clark has two thirds of a lap and less to go. And through the back marker traffic comes Michael Kane, comfortably on his own in second place. So behind Clark, the leader, and Kane, the second place man. This torrid battle for third continues. Third will be Mangian, fourth will be Woodcock, and well, if he can hold on to that, maybe fifth place for Jerry Taylor. Victory though, guaranteed for David Clark as he takes the chequered flag, and Michael Kane continues in the lead of this series.
Round 11 of the Caterham K-Series Challenge at Cadwell Park in Lincolnshire. And before the start, the fastest qualifier, David Clark, withdrew his entry, number one, which left Simon Harris, the number six machine, on the front of the grid, with Michael Caine at number four alongside him. And the massed field of 27 starters ready to go here at Cadwell Park. A very demanding circuit and a very tight getaway from the grid. Good starts at the front, but all oh, mud guards flying everywhere in the midfield. Well, already some naked wheels heading up before they even get to the first corner. We're riding with 61, Julian Locke. He started in fifth place on the grid, carrying our camera for us. Just ahead of him, Dennis OTA and Jerry Taylor. All the front row men getting away quite nicely. Michael Kane leading it. Simon Harris putting him under pressure now. Harris as they climb the hill, taking the lead and the inside line. Now he cuts across to the outside for the best braking and turn in point. Third place is eight, Jerry Taylor. And all of them safely through. Two or three abreast further down the order and a little bit of weaving back off the curbs as the cars get spat off under power. Insects die to give us a good view of this racing here. Don't think that we spare any expense to bring you the most excitement from the Caterham Ks. And uh, number five, Dennis OTA with a puff of smoke, just locking the left front wheel as it comes off weight in the left-hander there. So down they come then to the foot of the mountain. Number three, Warren Gilbert, hassling around in eighth, ninth place. But Simon Harris leading this one. Julian Locke coming through the Woodland Circuit. There he went, the blue and yellow car, number 61, and a couple of spots behind him. Number 22, Stephen Worley battling for position. Oh, dear. Well, this is a bit of a traffic jam and just down the dip, out of sight of everybody else. Almost impossible for the following drivers to avoid it. The road almost completely blocked, but everybody continuing. Last away, Alan Finn, and uh, is that oil or water in the middle of the track there? Yellow flags are out, so no overtaking here. Now they're green, now at the top of the hill there can be overtaking. Around the outside, will Julian Locke hold it on the brakes? He's got the better line for the corner, but no. Dennis is on the inside. Julian Locke fights back. Otier goes over the curbs. Locke's on the inside now. He's getting a squeeze from Otier, but he can't go too far over. Just a little wave out of the cockpit as he says thanks a lot to uh, Dennis Otier for allowing him a bit of room. And side by side, all the way they were there. Otier just out of our sight, but I'm sure that Julian Locke was watching him very closely indeed. Great battle there for fourth and fifth place. And the battle for the lead has changed as well. While we were watching that, Simon Harris sneaked back ahead at the top of the rise, ahead of Michael Kane. So Locke and OTA battling together for fourth. And the lead has changed again. OTA flinging it over the curbs and holding the slide. Locke a little tidier, looks at the inside line there. Thinks better of it though. 78, Simon Bennett behind them. Now closing right up in his turquoise machine. Still no change in the top three. The only one of them not to have led so far is Jerry Taylor. And again, riding with Julian Locke. This is a fascinating battle to watch firsthand from just above the driver's head, literally two or three inches above and to the left of his head. And Locke again has a very good run here at OTA. This time he'll make it stick, surely. He's got the momentum, doesn't miss the gear. He's on the inside. OTA can't take the line for the corner. Michael Kane does exactly the same thing to Simon Harris. And yes, Locke is ahead. Locke is up into fourth, OTA fifth, and oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Miles off on the grass goes the number three machine of Warren Gilbert. So Woodcock right with them, with the uh, indicators on, and Matthew Marsh next up behind him. Woodcock goes past Simon Bennett without any problems at all at the bottom of the mountain. Still leading this, Michael Kane, Simon Harris, Jerry Taylor. And that's the order, Jerry Taylor stuck in third, doesn't seem to be able to do much about it either. 
Oh dear, no, and off goes Locke. And a big pile up. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Julian Locke goes off. Just clearly getting a wheel on that slippery stuff there. And off into the barriers. What a shame. Well, still Simon Harris battling there with Michael Kane. 61, Julian Locke bails out. Dennis Otier's car just down the hill a little bit there. Still the same battle for the lead. Again, Kane comes past up the hill. It seems he has no problem on Park Strait passing into Park. If he can manage to stay ahead, if he does that on the last lap, he'll be laughing. Riding with Locke then, coming up to the hairpin. The right-hander turns in, and it all goes away from him there. Into the barriers he goes, thumped from behind by the closely following OTA. And a few others get involved in that as well. Well, he won't thank us for showing that replay. The black and yellow flags are out. It's the control yourselves and assume it's like a pace car situation Situation as the marshals push away the cars from the outside of the barriers there, a very dangerous place for them to have been left and for racing to continue. So the marshals doing no work, the drivers doing their part of the deal, coming round very slowly indeed behind the current leader, Michael Kane. And you can see some of the cars, certainly minus bits of fiberglass bodywork. Down to the line they come. They get the green flag, they're racing again. Simon Harris trying to challenge Michael Kane. There are two laps to go. So Michael Kane leading, Simon Harris second, Jerry Taylor still in third place. The second turquoise car of Simon Venice is in fourth place there. And it looks as though Harris is going to go for the lead this time, but no, Michael Kane holds him off again. 33 is Matthew Marsh in fifth place. Matthew Marsh, the one-time commentator, commodity broker now, lives in Hong Kong. Jets in to have fun with the boys in his caterham. Jealous? Me? I don't think so. Battle for the lead continues though, never mind all that. Michael Kane with Simon Harris as close as he's ever been. Well, Kane really resisting the pressure superbly here. Matthew Marsh in the 33 car, just ahead of Damon Dance, number seven there, and Marsh looking to go for fourth. Still the top four the same as they were. Everybody very, very close now after that restart. One lap to go, 22. Stephen Worley picks up a place from Mark Griffiths, and they all just about avoid Dennis Otier's car. You really can't stay out wide there for long. One lap to go then, final lap of Cadwell Park for Michael Kane and Simon Harris. 2.17 miles to go. Michael Kane always seems to be able to take the lead back here along Park Strait. Now can Harris learn from his earlier mistakes? He's going around the outside this time, he's ahead. This time he has the better line and he's ahead. And Michael Kane in danger perhaps of losing second to Jerry Taylor. Well, the lead changing, and perhaps irrevocably this time, Michael Kane has not too often passed anywhere else. Simon Harris as they come down the hill in the lead. Half a lap to go. Harris with a new lap record under his belt. Not bad for a newcomer to the from K Series Challenge. Michael Kane following Linus Stern, looking for some chance to pass. On the air, 36, Peter Mangan throws away a few places here on the last lap. But I don't think that Simon Harris will. I'm sure Michael Kane won't be too worried if he finishes where he is now. He'll tie up the championship here at Cadwell. And unless some disaster strikes, even now, I'm sure he'd still roll home with enough points. Simon Harris wins it, Michael Kane second. Jerry Taylor perennially third, ahead of Damon Dance, who outshuffled Matthew Marsh on the final lap for fourth. Marsh fifth, ahead of Michael Woodcock. So here is Simon Harris, helmet off, and uh, all smiles as he receives the winner's garland.
Great job to win that race from the experienced drivers behind him, but Michael Caine did all he needed to do, winning the championship from David Clark. Donington Park, the venue for the final round of the 1997 Caterham K-Series Challenge. These cars using K-Series Rover engines and their lightweight chassis. And on the front of the grid, number 53, Howard Redhouse, the fastest man in qualifying by some three-tenths of a second. Alongside him, second spot on the grid for number four machine of Michael Caine, the current championship leader. Number three in third, Warren Gilbert. And alongside him on the second row of the grid, number 30, Alan Finn. So our camera mounted with Warren Gilbert, third spot, and there's the gap straight ahead that he'll be looking for. The grid is ready. Five seconds board has been shown. So let's take the start with Warren Gilbert. Away we go, nice and safely, trying to feed in all the power as the rear wheels spin and the back snakes around. And Gilbert not getting the best of starts down to fourth place already and somebody on the inside down to fifth down to sixth he really can't take chances here warren gilbert slides to six now does he have a chance to make up a place on the run down no because he was balked into redgate coming down the inside of him is michael woodcock number 12. now he has a better line down the craner curves and woodcock decides that discretion on cold tires might be the better part of valor there woodcock drops back so warren gilbert holds sixth place but a dreadful getaway for him he will have hoped for much more than that. He was seven tenths of a second away from the pole position time in qualifying. Mark Griffiths here, number 77, further back down the pack. He was a little bit further away than that. Tire smoke ahead as somebody spins. Well, McLean's always a tricky corner. Very, very easy to make mistakes there. You go in under braking and try and turn at the same time. And clearly the Caterham ahead of him there didn't like that very much at all. Well, there they are in the gravel, 66 John Stack there, the yellow car with the Michael Schumacher helmet. Perhaps that had something to do with it. And Jerry Taylor, the other car involved there. Meanwhile, out front, Michael Kane making a move for the lead. Dives inside Howard Redhouse at the chicane to end lap one as the first position man. Big tire smoke behind us. Somebody has gone sailing on past the end of the circuit. And a couple of them trying to do so here as well. Across the grass goes number 18, Philip Raygate. Replay now from Jerry Taylor's car as he makes contact. That's why we had the spin there. The two cars locked together. John Stack there on the right. Howard Redhouse under pressure again from Michael Kane. Kane tries to go the long way round. Riding now with Mark Griffiths. Down into Redgate we come. Changing down the box. There he is on the inside of number one, David Clark. Great battle going on there. And as he runs wide, Clark looks to come down the inside. Look for the flash of telltale yellow nose coming alongside oh it's perilously close they really are inching by each other and then Clark just dives ahead as they come down the second left hand section of the Craner curves changing down braking and then accelerating hard through the old hairpin through the left hand kink at Schwantz and on the run up to McLean's the leaders are there now Michael Kane still applying the pressure but behind him number 78 is still right on his tail Simon Bennett in that Miami blue colored machine and the lead quartet have broken away now. There is Warren Gilbert, and there is Michael Woodcock. He's still going despite that impact earlier. Let's have a look again how it all happened. Woodcock just collects the back of Bygrave's car, and as Bygrave spins, Woodcock is flipped up into the air. Warren Gilbert somehow found a space round on the inside and picked up the two places. Again, the battle for the lead, and again at the old hairpin, it changes. Michael Kane goes ahead once more. Howard Redhouse still second place, and third, couldn't be closer, is the number 78 machine of Simon Bennett. Now, the four drivers ahead are the lead quartet. We're riding with fifth place Warren Gilbert, trying desperately to close on them. He's really struggling. Despite all the changes of lead, these four drivers are going very quickly indeed. And look at them fanning out behind Warren Gilbert, somebody with two wheels on the grass there between McLean's and Coppice. And Mark Griffiths loses a place. Our cameraman just finds himself being demoted a little bit further back down that queue. Now is there a chance? No, still no chance to come through there for Simon Bennett. The frustration must really be mounting there. Alan Finn in fourth place. Oh my goodness me, just ahead of into the chicane there. Dennis Otier is now in sixth position. 
And Warren Gilbert, there he is. He's a little way clear of this group now. He's starting to really row his way up to the leaders. Number 30, Alan Finn looking to go around the outside. Doesn't find space there. And this is the group behind. This is effectively the battle for sixth place. Well, Mark Griffiths is giving us a really great view of this battle all the way down the Craner curves now. Plunging over the brow of the hill, still can't see where they're going effectively. This double brow, double cornered run down the hill at high speed. And then heavy braking here. Fourth gear corner, the old hairpin piling on the power. The start of the climb now through Schwantz, still climbing, accelerating hard on the run up towards McLean's. Very tricky place to get on the brakes properly, especially with the road ahead of you full of cars. And there they come, what a massive battle that is. <laughs> they really are elbowing their way around. Riding again with Griffiths, he's so close to the car ahead. It's almost touching, you can't imagine just getting any closer than that without contact. And again the battle for the lead, down to the chicane. Michael Kane on the inside line, Howard Redhouse on the outside line. Still third is 78. And still in fourth place, number 30, Alan Finn. So Simon Bennett holding on. And once more, the battle for the lead goes side by side down the main straight. And this time, Howard Redhouse dives in, in the lead. Will he run wide? Will Michael Kane be able to come back at him, not exiting the corner? Oh dear, exiting backwards is Jerry Taylor, number eight. We saw him in the gravel earlier, so he's obviously out. So the leaders coming down the hill, and this time there has been a big change because Michael Kane is, oh, third place. He's not been third place since the start. Still, the battles continue behind them. Woodcock trying to force his way further up the field now, ahead of Dennis Otier. So into second place for the first time is Simon Bennett. Bennett started six, now after lap after lap of perseverance, he's worked his way up into second. But I think that Michael Kane will wish to change that. Kane now right on his tail. Somebody shedding fiberglass wing behind after a little collision. And it was Woodcock, I think. Yes, it was. Woodcock there with the bare wheel on the right-hand rear quarter. So three abreast they come, under braking this time. Kane in the middle, and that means hung out to dry is 78. He won't get through there in second place, Simon Bennett. And now he's in trouble because our cameraman comes alongside. Warren Gilbert is making back now all the places he lost from the starting grid. He started in third place, now he's back up into third. So we now have first the pole position man, second the second place man, and third the third man. Collisions at the chicane. They both continue, do they? Yes, they do. Just making it back onto the track, but back to the leaders again down the Craner curves. How many times has this been played out? And how many times? Oh, Nova so far with a collision. Michael Kane just picks up the rear mudguard, loses momentum as he saves the slide. Warren Gilbert goes up into second. Now, this is where he should have been on lap one, maybe, if he'd made a better start. So Warren Gilbert up into second, Bennett goes past as well, Michael Bennett up into third place, Michael Kane down to fourth place, fifth place Alan Finn in the purple car and the yellow car of number one David Clark pushing him along the straight in six. All two spinners, 39 nearest us, Andrew Davis gets going again but uh, gyrating once more on the grass there, 18 Philip Raygate down towards the end of the lap again, riding with Warren Gilbert, there is the leader ahead of us. Now he's comfortably out of braking range and Gilbert gets past as well. Coming by him comes uh, Simon Bennett. So Bennett picks up second place under braking and will he hold on? No, David Clark didn't quite hold on there to pick up the position from Alan Finn. Mind you, with four wheels on the grass, that wasn't much of a surprise, I suppose. Too busy trying to control the slide to get the power down. Gilbert comes around the outside of Bennett, back up into second. Well, what a great race these Caterham Ks have provided, their end of season finale here at Donington Park. Fantastic action, a really great driver's circuit, very nimble, agile cars to play with. They're thoroughly enjoying themselves. So Howard Redhouse still leading this one, Warren Gilbert in second place. There is Alan Finn, now he's been passed by David Clark, hanging on to the back of this little group. And Clark starting to try and work his way up the order. He qualified 14th, he's currently running in fifth place, so he's been having a storming race, working his way all the way through the big group of cars behind this lead battle.
Now Red House under pressure and look at this, side by side go Bennett and Kane and Bennett runs out of road through the gravel, keeps it alive. Will he rejoin? He does so safely, everybody avoids him. A big heart in the mouth moment for him after that little contact with Michael Kane, but he's still in the race, albeit down in 12th or 14th place. Under breaks, three abreast, astonishing. Alan Finn comes out ahead, no he doesn't. David Clark outbreaks them both in one fell swoop. And it looks as though Finn will lose out to Michael Caine as well as they come on to the final lap of this 10 lap at Donington Park. It could all still change, all these positions up the grabs and open to offers. Howard Redhouse will want to deny that. Here is the battle behind. Ross Bygrave, Michael Woodcock, Dennis OTA, Clive Chapman, they're all in there. And again, that could all change. And all the way through the field, the same story being repeated. You just don't find bored Caterham drivers on their own in this kind of racing. Red House now with half a lap to go. Warren Gilbert behind him, trying to close up and save it all maybe for a last lapper. Here's our cameraman, Mark Griffiths in 10th place. He's behind the big battle, Bygrave, Woodcock, OTA and Chapman. So out of McLean's on the run up to Coppers now. Red House from Gilbert. Through McLean's come our leaders. Clive Chapman kicks up the dust, he runs wide. He'll drop a couple of places there at least. Well, Mark Griffiths now right behind him. There's Clive Chapman, 64. Oh, he's looking to go inside OTA as OTA runs wide, goes in too hot. This will be a drag race par X lots all the way down the back stretch. Meanwhile, at the end of the straight, here comes Howard Redhouse. No challenge under braking. He's going to win the final race of the season. Howard Redhouse wins it. Warren Gilbert will be second. David Clark third. And Clive Chapman just holds on to ninth, does he? Oh, he's on the grass, will he hold it at the flag? Yes, I think so, Clive Chapman ninth there from our cameraman Mark Griffiths. So Howard Redhouse wins his first ever Caseham K-Series race, what a great way to finish the season. But behind him, Ross Beer holding on here in number 29, just from Andy Parker. That's 15th place, there's still another 14 cars behind them, scrapping for position as they come across the line. So Howard Redhouse, the winner then, the first ever victory in the Caseham case for him, and Michael Caine, the 1997 champion. St. Edison in Norfolk for the eighth and final round of the Daily Telegraph Caseham Sports Scholarship. The man who starts from pole position has already tied up the championship, Richard Hay. The championship contenders lining up behind him, battling for the lower places in the championship orders. And they are starting in championship positions because there was no qualifying due to the fog. So second there, number six, Christian Marriott. Third, Cecil Offley. And alongside him, Nick Harriott on the fourth spot on the grid. Notable missing driver here will be Michael Munns, not here to defend third place in the championship at the final round. So away they go after the fog of the qualifying session. Beautiful awesome conditions at Snetterton. And pole position into the first corner. Number 21 still out front, but a big, big pack behind him. So through they go. We're riding with Andy Toon. Started 14th. Oh, and off goes number 12. High speed gyration for Julian Atkinson into first gear and off we go again. Richard Hay leads behind him from third spot on the grid, Cecil Offley. And two abreast into the S's. Now we're riding with Jamie Unwin. He's shown very good speed in the races at the end of the season. Out of the S's they come, kicking up the dust on the outside as he rejoins his David Williams. Dropping down the order as Jamie Unwin tries to pick up a position. Doesn't quite happen for him. But he's having a run at Andrew Edwards around the outside at Coram. Very brave move as the car gets sideways and very sideways as well has gone Andy Toon onto the grass. Just gathers it up in time to go into the chicane, but only just. And the 1600cc crossflow Ford really pushing him sideways out of the corner there. Through goes Andy Toon then. Andy Toon started 14th. And picking up the toe here as he comes in the slipstream of the cars ahead, nicely dropping out into Riches, oh, and again a big slide, went in very hot indeed, trying to hold it under power. Has to come out of the throttle a fraction, scrubs off a bit of speed. 
and slipstreaming as we saw there very effective on these long straights at Snetterton the aerodynamics of a brick in these cage jumps if you can get in somebody's toe you can pick up a good five miles an hour maybe more but out front Richard Hay already starting to make a break Cecil Offley there down into fourth place so a great deal of reshuffling all the way down the order here and as ever the cars accompanied into the corners by the squealing of tires as they work very hard indeed to try and bring the speed down these very lightweight cars with plenty of horsepower for their weight really exciting driving these are so richard hay goes through in second place is number two nick harriet and again jamie unwin trying to pick up a position under braking doesn't do it but comes down the inside of number seven what a fantastic move on Kristen bolton unwin hugging the pit wall and just has enough momentum, I think, to stay ahead of Bolton. Down into the braking area. Here comes number 11, Oliver Hager. He's picked up the toe, and he will outbreak him. He does outbreak Jamie Unwin into the corner. So through Richie's they go, and off towards Sia. Now, can Unwin come back at him, or will he sit and wait to pick up the toe on the straight? Oh, he doesn't need to, because in too hot goes Oliver Hager, and around he goes. And he tuned in the slipstream there. Now he darts out. You can see it very clear as he came out of the slipstream. Number one is alongside him and they're both trying to go down the inside. So in the middle there, 88 Cecil Offley. And he gets uh, sandbag from both sides. No way to defend against that. One on the left, one on the right. Martin Butcher chasing along behind him a couple of spots further back down the order. Number three machine just outside the top ten at the moment. Neat and tidy through Russell come the lead quintet as it is now. Oh, Jamie Unwin comes in absolutely with a full head of steam. And the Caterham does not like that a lot. But he keeps his foot well planted. Nice recovery from the teenager. Now you'll probably have seen from some of the uh, camera shots of the rear of the cars that they're all wearing novices crosses for most of these drivers. This is only their second or third race ever. So they're not doing badly at all. They've had sprints and hill climbs for most of the season to uh, fine up their driving ability, but it's very different on the fast expanses of this Snetterton race course. Now then, closing behind Christian Marriott, courtesy of Andy Toon. And again, Toon keeps the right foot planted firmly. If you chicken out in a catrum, it just reverses on you. So it's important to keep your foot in. Richard Hay knows all about that. He's seen the scenery gyrating about him often enough in practice to have learned that lesson. We ride on board now with the 1997 Daily Telegraph Caterham Sports Scholarship winner. Well, he's already into Coram, but the chasing pack behind him, still led by Roger Wilkin, but number one, the red nose band of Nick Frost behind him. And then two, Nick Harriot in third place. Still on the back of the pack is Andy Toon. Nice and neat and tidy into Russell. And, oh my goodness, Toon's right across the gravel. How on earth did he hold on to that? Toon was crashing there, and somehow he wasn't after that. That must have scared the willies out of Christian Marriott. Suddenly, Andy Toon emerged from a cloud of gravel right alongside him, fully crossed up. My goodness, and oh no, Jamie Unwin's at it again, still battling for position right behind them. There is the number 27 machine. But let's go back and have a look at that move by Andy Toon, coming down into Russell. Everybody else is on the brakes here. Toon decides that that's not the way to go. Across the gravel, all out of control, on the lock stops. Somehow finds the gear with one hand and waves a massive thank you to Christian Marriott for somehow avoiding him. Riding again with Andy Toon. Don't forget he's now in fifth place. Oh dear, and Frost gyrates. He's now in fourth place. I'm correcting myself even as we speak qualified in 14 now he's moving up to third place he's really picked up a strong two off nick harriet now if this is a one two five motorcycle race he'd have ducked back in to get another toe a secondary toe off roger wilkin but he's going to be brave on the brakes and that will be enough in this instance for andy toon to slingshot himself into second or will it yes no no somehow wilkin holds on toon gets a biff but he holds it. I have to say he has got some staggering car control on the loose. 
This may only be his second or third race, but he looks like he's had a career in rally driving, not just before that, but during these races. So uh, perhaps he ought to take to the gravel a little bit more frequently. Well, he's dropped down a couple of positions there, but some great, great moves. Jamie Unwin now chasing right behind Andy Toon. So Unwin has shaken clear of the chasing pack. Now to join up onto this four, five car train. Jamie Unwin, 27 there he is. Carrying our camera, indicators on. He's not popping in for a cup of tea, surely. Riding again with Andy Toon. This always means excitement. He goes down the inside nice and safely. Can he come out on the outside nice and safely? Yes, he does. That's not a place to get it wrong. Riches is a very quick corner. Oh, and another gyration, I'm afraid, for Tim Hodges. Another little rush of blood to the head there, Tim, I think. Roger Wilkins second there, Nick Harriott third, as was before. Andy Toon in fourth position. Chris Marriott worried, but closing in fifth place. And he needs to be worried because Jamie is right behind him in the number 27 machine, Jamie Unwin. And with uh, our two cameramen on either side of him, I think Christian Marriott's only safe option is to pull over now before it all gets worrying once more. Oh no, knocked into the inside of Coram. He can't do it, surely. Oh, Christian Marriott defends down the inside onto the brakes, heel and toe. Oh, and again, fully, fully crossed up. Didn't quite hold it that time, though. Jamie Unwin, well, <laughs> there must be experienced racing drivers watching this who will think, no, 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 that was never on, but surely that's the beauty of novice drivers. Absolutely furious with himself, but he thought it was on or he would never have gone in there in the first place. So far off the racing line, comes in so hot, almost holds it. If it weren't for the fact that he had to lift off the throttle at the apex there, he would have kept that alive. But there's just not enough room to stay on the power. Restarts it and off he goes. And towards the chequered flag, for the eighth and final time in the season, this is his seventh victory in eight outings. Richard Hay takes victory. The championship already confirmed at Mallory Park, but as we rush up to the flag, no chance to pull out of the toe for Andy Toon. 14 to third by just a fraction of a second from second place man Roger Wilkin. Richard Hay looking very pleased with himself. Seven wins out of eight starts. Only one second place to block the copybook. Wins the championship convincingly. Christian Marriott ran out in second place and by one point. Cecil Lockley third, Nick Harriott fourth.